Jerome Powell just dropped a bombshell for all investors out there. Holy moly, he has finally changed his stance on inflation. Now, what does this mean for stocks going ahead? We've seen a very large initial knee-jerk reaction when this statement came out. And then stocks kind of bounced, they fell again, and then you really rallied. This was a fake rally. This was a completely algorithmic fake rally that you see in the NASDAQ. Then you fell right back down. Now you're popping up again. As we head into the end of the day, I think tomorrow's actually when you're going to get a lot of this digestion of what Powell just said. So I don't think this situation is over at all. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. And my friends, let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's start with the bombshell from Powell himself. Here you have it. Jerome Powell says recent data shows lack of further progress on inflation. That is because in 2024, we had a hot CPI report, PC report as well in January, February, and now it looks like March as well. That's problematic. Three months tends to make a trend. And if you look at the trend in inflation, that's that's correct. He's kind of pointing out the pointing out the obvious that a lot of us have already seen. There's not much progress on inflation these days. And in fact, the last inflation report that we had, you you did see um, the goods inflation really start to rock. And I didn't have it pulled up. I wasn't expecting to pull it up. But inflation didn't come out too long ago. Okay, so this was the chart I was looking for. So you can see here, if we go ahead and uh, blow this up and make it larger, you can see here in red, you have goods inflation. I know I'm taking up a corner of this screen, but you can see goods inflation was really high in 2022 and parts of the, you know the end of 2021. And it was basically gone ever since about June of 2023. Sure, you had some some spikes in goods inflation, but basically gone. Now you're starting to get three months of increasing goods inflation. That is really not good. Okay, that is bad. Now, to what extent does that does that go to? I don't know. Oil rising recently, I can sit here and say that is a inflationary input cost to everything. I've said it before, but these Arizona green teas that I love, that banana, right? These one a day vitamins, all of these things were transported to me. All of them in some way, shape or form are touched by oil and oil rising is, is the easiest thing to point out. But you also have cocoa, you have all kinds of different commodities that are going up quite a bit in price. And that is the biggest thing that leads into goods inflation, because a lot of manufacturing these days are done by like robots, right? A lot of the manufacturing is not human labor anymore. Definitely not like it used to be. So uh, <clears throat> those commodities going up has a big effect on goods inflation. And from this perspective, it looks like goods inflation is starting to become a problem. Now, you also see here in super core inflation, you are getting an uptrend again in super core inflation. So we know these things, but Powell just came out and said that with with a definitive kind of stance that there's not really any further progress on inflation. Jerome Powell says 12 month core PC inflation was little changed in March, according to estimates. And then he says if higher inflation persists, the Fed can maintain the current rate as long as needed. He says the current situation is not the standard case of inflation driven by overheated demand. So these statements are basically saying like, hey, inflation's not falling as fast as we would like. This is not a typical cycle. Um, and he even says here 2023 was the year of supply side recovery. He's saying there is other forces at play here that are causing this inflation and they're going to have to stay higher for longer. Now, you have seen a repricing in expectations for Fed policy this year. That has already happened, but it continues to happen even today. Markets are expecting a um, less accommodative Fed today than they were yesterday and the day before that. 
If you take a look at what the markets are pricing in here in the Fed Funds futures market, you can look at this with investing.com. For September 18th, that is the first time you're expected to see the Fed cut rates. There's a 44.7% chance of one cut, 33.7% chance of no cut by September. So we're like talking about no cut even in September. November, there's a 42% chance of a cut the day after the election, um, which would be uh, probably when the Fed would, would would like to cut rates anyways to stay kind of politically out of things. But there also is a 25.5% chance of no cut through the election. December 18th, there is a 35.1% chance of one cut, 32.1% chance of two cuts, and 15.1% chance of no cuts. So now there's a 15% chance of no rate cuts in 2024. Indeed, there's actually a half of 1% chance of a hike in 2024. Now, from the market's perspective, here's the logic. Earnings are going to come in good because the economy is, is, is still chugging along and doing, doing fine. So that's why you want to own stocks. And as far as the Fed is concerned, right now, there's not really the conversation of, are we going to raise rates or cut rates next? The conversation right now is how long are we going to stay paused before we cut rates? So if the conversation does turn back to maybe the Fed needs to raise rates again, that's where you see a disaster, like epic disaster playing out for markets. But we are not quite there yet. I will just tell you that we are not quite there yet. And that is not the narrative that is starting to to build, I guess, a little bit half of 1% chance of a hike, but give you another month or two of, of hotter than expected inflation reports. And the Fed is definitely going to be talking about raising rates again. Now, like I said, you got this initial knee jerk reaction, a third of 1% down in, in this one minute candle, another 0.16% down in this candle, almost a half of 1% drop here on this um, headline from Powell, and then you kind of rallied, and then you fell, and now you're kind of rallying into the end of the day today. This is a fake rally. This is what you call a fake rally. This is algorithmic trading. This is trying to, or uh, markets trying to just screw everyone. Okay, that's the market makers. That's what the market makers do. Uh, not even trying to get to like tinfoil here, but that's what they do, right? You go up on bad news, you go down on good news. It, the markets these days don't act very rational. The news doesn't tend to make a lot of sense in regards to the reaction in the markets. Even on CNBC, after Jerome Powell said that and the markets were ripping higher, CNBC was like, why are markets going higher right now? This makes no sense. Nobody understands. It's because it's all driven by computers. But a lot of the time when you get these fake moves, that's what I'm going to call it, a fake move. The next day, you actually get the real move. So Powell was hawkish today. He changed his stance that he has had for the last nine months today. Whereas he said, you know, we're making great progress on inflation, blah, blah, blah. You've, you you know what Powell is, has been saying. I, I don't think I need to rehash all of that. But now today, he's he's changed that. And he's saying progress on inflation is stalling. There's, there's no more progress on inflation as of right now. And I do think that could turn out to be a big negative catalyst for tomorrow. Now, you also want to watch this Israel-Iran news. Not too much as far as specifics there. Israel wants to act uh, quicker than not. Today, we're not getting any major war headlines. And that's another reason why markets maybe have a little bit more room, um, you know, to to trade upwards we were up a half of one percent right now we're up a third of one percent but again jerome powell uh came in and dropped a bombshell on us the biggest thing that you really want to watch right now is earnings if earnings come in good fantastic if earnings come in bad obviously not so good but you have to consider where these stocks are at that are reporting earnings asml High-flying AI stock, TSMC, high-flying AI stock, Netflix, high-flying big tech stock. All of these stocks are either at all-time highs or within 5 to 7% of all-time highs. That's telling you 
expectations are high. You don't even have to look at what the specific earnings are for these stocks. You can judge off the stock price to say expectations are high for this one. <laughs> if the stock's trading at all-time highs, if it's up 100% in the last three months, expectations are high. Just meeting expectations is not good enough. And in my personal opinion, from my perspective, I think earnings estimates are way too high. People are uh, way too excited about earnings, even if earnings are good. I think you have to beat those good or high expectations plus some to get a further rally in our market. So I do think ASML, Wednesday pre-market, TSMC and Netflix, that's going to be the deciding story of this week. And especially with ASML tomorrow morning, that one could be big. Uh, a lot of Wall Street uh, does like that one as an AI stock and stocks went up quite a bit from about $500 back in October, November to almost $1,000 today. So very high expectations there. Could set you up for a little bit more disaster coming tomorrow morning. That could have a rippling effect um, broad, more broadly throughout the entire markets. Now, something else that has been happening over the last couple of days is uh, your 10-year treasury yields, your, your long-duration treasuries, have been rising, their yields have been rising at a very aggressive speed. So just back here on April 9th, 10-year treasuries were sitting at 4.36%. Fast forward seven days, and 10-year treasuries are, what, 30-some basis points higher at 4.66%. That's a crazy move higher in 10-year treasuries. 10-year treasuries yesterday went up almost 13 basis points. Today, you're still up about three and a half basis points. One reason why you could be seeing this, you know, rally kind of market shrugging off Jerome Powell is because 10-year treasuries were up six basis points on the day today. Now they're only up about three basis points on the day. And, and really, I don't even think the Fed is having too much of an impact on treasuries right now. I think a lot of it has to do, um, you know, with, with just the risk out there with the government, the government spending a lot of money that is likely affecting your 10-year treasury yields as of right now. But with almost certainty, I think tomorrow you're going to get a digestion of what Jerome Powell just said, and likely it's going to be a pretty rough day. Now, if if ASML has really good or really bad earnings, that's obviously going to uh, have quite a large impact on our markets, in my personal opinion. Now, as I said before in previous videos, I think testing the 100-day moving average is your base case scenario here. Okay, that is your base case scenario. That is at $421. Now, what does base case scenario means mean? That means I think that is the most likely outcome. Best case scenario is you bounce here, you retake that 50-day moving average, and you kind of trend sideways for the next couple of months. That's your best case scenario. Your worst case scenario could be an event gosh, where earnings come in bad, geopolitical tensions get worse, inflation continues to run hot, and uh, maybe that even forces the Fed to do an emergency rate cut if, if you do get an oil price shock or something along those lines. In that event, I think you could fall back to your October-November lows, which would be down to about 340 on the NASDAQ, and maybe even fall lower than that. I think markets are priced for perfection, and I think there's a whole lot of not perfection coming ahead of us in all of these different categories on inflation, on maybe economic activity, on earnings, right, from the Fed, geopolitical tensions. So uh, that would be like your worst case scenario. But I think a more realistic worst case scenario is down to about 390 on the NASDAQ. That would be your 200-day moving average. That would basically get rid of all of 2024's gains. That would take you back to about mid-December 2023. Of course, we had still rallied by this point from the October-November low, you had still rallied about 14%. So you'd still be 14% um, higher than where you were in October-November. But I think that's probably where stocks should be right now, given all of the risk. Um, again, markets are, are, are just holding a lot of weight on earnings. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe earnings come in really freaking good. Maybe they come in much better than expected. But I think leading with that as your base case really sets you up for disaster. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a great rest of your day.
and I will see you in the next one.